Hello and welcome to some math challenge. I have realized trying to do academics remotely has been a little tricky. So I found a couple uh, things I'm sure some people know, but I want to reiterate what we can do. I found a freezer bag, kind of a nice size freezer bag, and put a white piece of paper in here to make an instant whiteboard. And then along with your whiteboard pen, works perfectly fine. We're gonna set that aside for just a minute. I wanna kind of give that out. Cause I did similar things with our math review challenge boards. Put everything inside a um, freezer bag or one of those little sleeves I had laying around. So we're gonna go ahead and go along with this. I tried to get that number line on there so we'll be able to check it out. Hopefully it'll work for us. If not, we'll have to revamp, revise, and just try to stay in our routine. So let's go ahead and get going. If you're looking at the sign right here, we wanna make sure that everyone knows that is an addition sign. Plus addition, if you're reading in a word problem, in all, all together, that would all mean to add. In our classroom, we just call it something that smashes. See how they kind of come together and they just smash together those um, two lines. So we smash together, we know it's going to be an addition problem. So what I like to do is, is find our biggest number. This helps me know that students know uh, what number is greater or less than. So we tap or put a little dot right there by our greater number. And then we put a little tally by the smaller number so we know how many more to count on. So for this one, we're gonna tap, actually touch the dot, tap for four, one more would be four, five. So this answer would be five. Now if we go right down here to our number line, it doesn't matter which number you choose. You don't have to choose the four first. Sometimes it's less counting for some of the students if they have trouble tracking one-on-one. -on -one. So, but you can choose any of the numbers. So we'll go ahead and just choose one to start. So you put a dot on the dot for number one. Don't count that. You're gonna jump to the next number for four times. You're gonna jump four times. So we're just gonna start here, jump to the next one, and count one, two, three, four. And we ended up at that number five, the same number we came up with earlier. All right, great job. So I'm gonna erase this one. And we're gonna move on to our next one. Again, I usually have the students pick which number is greater, the bigger number, more value. A lot of that math terms is really great to use with those students. Okay, so we know nine. Now usually when we're counting more than five, we will bundle the five, but when you're trying to count the tally marks, it's just easier just to do tally marks itself. And then we'll do tally marks for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna tap nine and count six more. Ready? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, if you all got 15, we'll do 15. It's a one and a five. So again, if you're gonna do down here, we call it jump math. I'm sure it's this number line math, whatever you wanna designate or name it. They don't have to pick any particular one. This time we'll actually start with the bigger number on here. I uh, just indicate with a dot above that number so we're, that's what you start. You don't count there first. You have to jump first before you do your counting. So you would start here. 
you would have to jump to the next one to count on one, two, three, four, five, and six. Did we end up at the same number? Yes, we did. Okay. Swipe this one. And our last one. Maybe a little tricky for me. So which is the bigger number? On zero, do we tally anything? There's nothing to tally. So we know we're just going to tap the number four. Four. Four will be your answer. Now, a lot of times when students are counting, they start with the number one. I like to count with zero because zero is one of our numbers and it could be one of the answers as we move through our math problems. So I'm going to take the zero and count on. So I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to mark it accordingly to with that little dot. And then because over here it says I need to count on four more, I will jump four. Everyone ready? One, two, three, and four. We receive the number four here and here. Okay, great job, everybody. Now that's addition. I'm going to turn this over. We have subtraction on the other side. So let's start with our first one. Now during subtraction, you're always going to use the top number and you're going to take away, minus, um, left is some of the other uh, math terms that we can use. So we're just going to find a number at the top and we know we're going to start here as we use our number line or counting. I always like to use the number line because it gives the kids that security of knowing they can tap it all using um, counters would be helpful if it's needed. Okay, here we go. So if I was going to do this and I just knew three subtract, three take away, three minus, three is going to be, so I'm going to start at three. Now remember when you're doing the subtraction, you're going to go backwards. You're going to jump to the left. So now we're going to jump three times to the left. See the arrow? So I don't count here. I'm going to jump to the next one and start my count. One, two, three. The answer is zero. That's why it's so important for us to remember using that zero in our counting for beginning and ending as we count forward and backwards. Okay, great job on that one. Our next one, our top number is four. So we know we're going to start at the number four down here. And it says to subtract minus what's going to be left. We're going to use that kind of vocabulary. It says we don't get to jump any. So we have four. We don't go back any. So our answer is going to be four. You're right. Now we use this a lot of times, especially when the weather is nice. Uh, I'll put a number line in chalk outside and students will just be able to hop either forward or backwards during their math problems. It not only gets them some exercise, but when you have movement and education together, that really helps solidify in the brain those um, the way to do the math problems. So if you're doing it with your body, it really does help almost like a muscle memory. Okay, let's get rid of this one. So our next one over here, we're gonna start at the eight. So this we're gonna subtract or minus. Let's see what's gonna be left. 
and we're only going to jump backwards one time. So here we are. We're going to be on the eight. We don't count here. We just go backwards one. Ready? One. And what did your answer become? Seven. You're right. Eight subtract one is seven. Okay. So now we have a multiplication challenge board that I have. So students, we're just going to go to twos today. And sometimes you can do different things like make an array. An array is just a grid. So and a lot of times we'll make an array or we'll use different boxes. So I'm going to erase this. My apologies. So in here, our first question is, this is groups of. We look at this one and this one. They're talking to each other. Zero groups of zero. So if there's no groups down here and there's nothing in them, we can easily say the number's going to be, you're right, zero. So then we're going to go along this top line here. Zero groups of one. Okay, here's a one, but there's no groups of it. There's no groups. So zero. Zero groups of two. You're right. Zero. Anything groups of zero, just know your number is going to be zero. Okay, we're only going to two right now. You're welcome to move all the way through it. But let's go ahead and jump on down on your left hand side. We're going to do one group of zero. So one group, I have one group here, but there's nothing in it. One group of zero. How many are in the group? Zero. Great job. And we're going to move right over. We have one group of one. So I have one group with one in it. How many are there? You're right. One. Great job, everybody. We're going to do another one group of two. We're looking for this box right here. One group of two. So there's one group with two in that. You're right. Great job doing your multiplications. All right. So anything times zero, the answer will be zero. And anything times one, is going to be the other number. So one group of zero, we have zero. One group of one, it's going to be one. One group of two, it's going to be two. Okay, let's move on. Go back to that left side. We're going to start at the number two right here. We're going to do two groups. So if you need to have a visual or need a little um, assistance. So now we're working with two groups. So we've done this part. This is going to be groups. The of part is how many goes inside that. So let's try this. We have two groups of zero. We show that here. How many can we count inside? Correct. There are zero. Two groups of zero is zero. Now we're going to do two groups of one. So in each group, there's one group, two groups. In each group, it's going to be one. So then we just count those up. One, two. Two groups of one is going to be two. Well done.
do our last one just for this chart today. We're going to do two groups of two. So we have our two groups, and in each group we're going to have how many? Two. That's what it gives us the information here. Just keep checking the data. They give you everything you need to know. Okay, so two groups of two is how much? One, two, three, four. Perfect. And you find the four here. Now we're not going to fill in this whole chart. We'll continue on Wednesday until we get this whole chart completed. But what we'll do is do a little challenge. So I put some challenges on the back side. So what I like to do is I like to pick the smaller number for the groups. It means you need to make smaller or less boxes. So in this one, I'm going to say four groups of. Even if it was eight groups of four, even if the eight was over, I pick the smallest number. That's going to be my groups. So on this one, I'm going to make four groups. Okay, now help me out. I'm done with the four groups. How many is going to go in each group, everybody? Now we've already used the four. We have one, two, three, four. We've already used this four. What number's left? What will go inside the groups? Yes, correct. We're gonna do eight in each group. So make sure not to make these too messy because you may have to count them. in a specific way, and if you don't make them just right, there we go. It may be tricky to count, so make sure they have their own personal space. So some of my friends that we've been working this multiplication, some of them count to all of them, and we just go through and count. Some of them can know two groups of eight, eight plus eight is 16. And we have the same thing here, 16. And then you would have to add these together. That can, that can be a lot of work. Some of them we have done a couple ways. We've done 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So then this is our number and we count on. So now we're going to tap 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now 24 has become our tap number. That's going to be our tap number. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. There's no more boxes. There's no more amounts to count. So the answer will be yes, 32. Now, when we started this, I did say we can use something in this manner. That way, if some of the kiddos don't have small writing, more defined, you could do this. So we're going to do three boxes, make it nice and large. We've used the three, everybody. How many will go in each box? Wait a minute. We've already used the three. There you go. We're going to use the seven next. Now you can make your dots a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to count. And you can put them in here any way you need. 
Just make sure they have their own personal space. Now you can count them all if you would like. Or the way that we've really been working on them is similar to this up here we did with our four times eight in our classroom. So we already know this is a group of how many? Yeah, seven. So we know that's already going to be seven. That'll be your tap number. So we're going to tap seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now 14 becomes your new tap number. So let's tap 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Are there any more boxes to use? Nope, we had our three groups of seven, so our answer is going to be 21. All right, now we're going to do our next one. So we're going to use four times five. So what's the smallest number in this multiplication? Yes, the four. So let's go ahead and just make four boxes. Doesn't matter how big your boxes are, don't have to be perfect, you just gotta know. So what number did we use already? Correct, we've already used the number four. How many will go in each box, everybody? I know when we're trying to do a challenge, I'll try to keep all this so it's not looking. So you only have to see one number. And what is it? Perfect. Five. So in each box, we're going to be counting by fives. Okay, so here we go. We have four groups of five. We're gonna figure out whatever the answer is going to be. So four groups of five, you guys ready? All right, so we're gonna count this first one. We already know it's probably gonna be five, but let's count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Correct. Now five is gonna become your new what? Tap number, right. So you don't have to count all that all over again. So then we're gonna do five and go to the next box. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Add your 10 down here. And 10 becomes your new tap number. Perfect. So we're gonna tap this one, and remember, come all the way down to your left-hand side, just like you're reading. Just drop down, here we go. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Nice, 15 becomes our new tap number. Great job, you guys. Okay, here we go, we have one more box to do. So we're gonna tap which number? Yes, the 15, ready? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Are there any more boxes to count? So then four groups of five, four times five is gonna be how much? You're right, the answer is gonna be 20. Some friends like to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20. If you're able to do that, perfect. Now 
the friends, if you want to challenge yourselves and keep going on this side of the page, we'll work on um, up to the fours on Wednesday. And if you feel you can complete more or add more to it, no problem. Go ahead. Review, 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 and challenge yourselves daily. All right, everybody, that's all for today, and thanks for watching.